Did you get all of that? What did it say? These nuts. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Got it. Show your commentary on sports, entertainment, and alternative news. Hey, come on, come on with it. You know what it is. Hey, it's what up, do the what up, do the what up, do show. Yo, what up, do it's your boy T. Wilson. I am live on a Sunday night. I'm recording this one. I just kind of jump all over the week, don't I? But, yo, it's been a couple of weeks. We didn't do a show last week, but it's all good in the hood because uh, it was just busy, man. It was just busy. Uh, today's show, again, is going to be kind of different. The format of the What Up Those show has gone through somewhat of a transition, I'd say, uh, because today I have live. Um, it was well, not live, but I recorded it live, a live recording of an interview I did with comedian Martini Harris, and uh, with no further ado, let's go ahead and get these bodies bodies. <laughs> What's up, this your boy OG Tim Wilson. I am here live uh, with comedian Martini Harris. What's going on, Martini? Oh, what's up? What's your town? I want to thank you for joining the Comedy Spotlight, man. And uh, uh, what's been happening around there, man? You still up in the D, right? Oh, uh, man. Still up in the D. They didn't call it. They didn't went from Detroit to destroy. And I ain't dogging my city. I love my city. The city ain't got nothing to do with it. Because every time somebody shoot, they always saying, man, Detroit bad. Detroit say, I ain't got nothing to do with it. It's these it's these fools out here that's doing it. <laughs> it ain't Detroit. It's Dion and Devin. He was about to say it's these niggas, but he tried to bite his tongue. He tried to bite his tongue. <laughs> I don't even know Nigga, you can get each other on it. This ain't the radio, goddammit. This is this is the real shit. So you can you can say what you want to say. All right. We keep it real up in this piece. That's what that's the that's the difference. That's why we do it this way. I could be on radio. I could be on uh, I can be on radio here, but uh they won't let me do it like I want to do it. So I, I do it right here. Oh yeah. You feel me? Oh yeah. I said that's a beautiful thing on Soul Train. <laughs> so you're live with uh, comedian Martini Harris right here on the Comedy Spotlight. Um, Martini, tell me something about what's going on with you because I know I had, uh, of course, my first spotlight I did a couple weeks ago with, you know, my boy, Tony Roberts. And um, uh, he was telling us about a one-hour special that his next one-hour special he recorded in Detroit, which is both of our hometowns. Uh, all yeah. three of our hometowns that brought him into the conversation. It's called Motor right. City Motor Mouth. And he told me that his favorite comedian he brought on the show and his favorite comedian happens to be you. Oh, Tell wow. me about that. How did that go down? Oh, man. Number one, man, that was a that was a blessing, man. You know, because, uh, well, first of all, uh, Tamara Goins, she helps Tony a lot because uh, I know his wife is his, his manager. So... Okay. You know, Tamara Goins, you know, she um, books Tony with a lot of things and whatnot. And Tony was putting his show together. So, I mean, I didn't know anything about it. And when I got there, Tamara Goins, she like told everybody, they nobody going on. I was like, oh, man. So, you know, I feel kind of bad. But at the same time, I still wanted to do the Shaq All-Star Tour. But that's that shows you how God works. Because she books the check. Yeah, exactly. See, I didn't know it. I didn't know who they. I, I didn't know who Tamara Goins and Valerie um, Bernie was. But it turned out to be them, and I end up performing for the people 
that was in charge and behind they they were the mu- they are the muscle of the check all star comedy tour but anyway exactly exactly um, i went there and um i was the only one was allowed to go on and i i did my thing man and you know tony you know how tony talked because he tony talked so fast his lips don't move so it's almost like he a ventriloquist he talked with his stomach like oh dude man let me tell you dude i'm telling you man they they loving you dog oh man yeah dog you know man you you gonna do things <laughs> but i look at it like this on the real man like uh it, it, it was something that i said before too man um I look at it like like Ice Cube helped out Mike Epps, Kevin Hart, Chris Tucker. You know what I'm saying? And um, of course, Kevin Hart reached back. You know, and he helped out his 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 boys. And one in particular that sticks out, and that's Lil Real Hari. You know, Kevin Hart reached back and helped him out. So I look at this whole Tony Roberts is as that's his hand looking back and putting me in that position and helping me out so That's- i look at him as my big brother in comedy you know and also label him as hilarious noise <laughs> hilarious noise that's a good name for his silly ass now I, I don't know if you know this or not man but i've been knowing it for a long time uh tony for i mean for years when i say years i'm talking decades well we because you know we've been in this game for a long time uh yeah. he is, you have been one of you have been his favorite guy for a long time man Tony had that quick wit comedy. He had that comedy where fear didn't play didn't play a role in his circumference. And when I first met Tony Roberts, I went up on stage and he was like, dude, he said, man, you crazy. <laughs> what are you talking about? And when I say, what are you talking about? Because my really my what are you talking about is, nigga, how you know? <laughs> Cause he was like, man, this dude here, he don't, he, he he's a random thinker. He just say whatever come to his mind, <laughs> and you know. But yeah, man, it's just uh, is it, and that's why I actually got that 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 quote that's on my Twitter, man. It says, um, if you want to blow up in this game of comedy, you have to be dynamite on stage, and that I got from Tony Roberts because back in the day, you remember the three one threes and the strawberry fields. Oh, I love yeah. going behind him. Like when yeah. he go up, the other comedians was afraid. Like who next? I ain't going yet. Or let me go before yeah. Tony, because it was the energy. You know what I'm saying? And it, that made me better. So I mean, when I first did it, yeah, of course I bombed. I couldn't hack it. But I said, if then you know, consistency is power. And I, I put it through. Yeah, and that's why that's why he closes out the the Shack tour when he's on because the same thing is still true. Guys don't like he's not the biggest name on the show, but guys do not want to follow him. Uh, you're here live with uh, on the Comedy Spotlight with comedian Martini Harris and Martini. Speaking of, uh, you mentioned what your what your uh, quote is on Twitter. What's your Twitter handle? Oh, my Twitter handle is a toast of Martini. That's A T O A S T O F M A R T I N I. And Martini Tony. is my real What is that last part I missed? I'm sorry. No, I said Martini is my real government name. I ain't trying to be a stripper or nothing. All right. He's like, uh, stripper meets comedy. I go up there with a full outfit on, get a standing ovation, leaving in my drawers. <laughs> now, Martini is also, for those that don't know, is an, an extremely awesome impressionist if you if you know tony roberts you and you are familiar with him you know that when he was doing tony he sounds just like him that's why i was getting such a kick out of it but he does a lot more his most famous to date was uh none other than richard Pryor. you used to kill with that i remember when you was first when you first started it was like his show was not all that great until he did richard Pryor. and it was like damn bring this nigga back <laughs> do that shit again <laughs> <laughs> it was like okay he's all right he's all right then it started doing rich and it was like damn but you know what bro you know what let me tell you oh shit he froze you're live with uh comedian uh martini here so you were about to tell me a story about uh about the richard Pryor thing you said you know oh, man, yeah. you got- wait hey man i'm here feedback. all right we're back live with martini with comedian martini here we're having a little uh he had some little hiccups you know he was freezing it happens every once in a while out here on blab we are live on blab.im for those that don't know. So if you want to check it out and check out a replay of it, be chopped up. But, you know, 
Uh, of course, the podcast version is going to be clean, but uh, blab.im is an awesome site. Uh, so uh, make sure you, you stop in and, and meet all of us. Right now, he's walking around doing some chores and shit. <laughs> Talk to me, man. We gonna be we gonna get through this Richard Pryor story before we be in this damn interview. The Richard Pryor story, man. It's just uh, you know it was just a lot of cats out there like Mad Marv at the times, so um, Ari Spears. You know they had great in, impersonations of other people, but when I heard them do Richard Pryor, and you know I was still humble at that time, saying like, wow, you know, and other people been telling me like, man, they they ain't touching on you. You know how your boys. You know, your own people in your own circle will hype you up, even though they know the truth that somebody is actually better than you. But, you know, it was just just random people just telling me like, dude, they can't mess with you. Not on that. Man, the Rich thing, man, I, I, I literally been doing the Richard Pryor, believe it or not, since I was, uh, and I put in my material too, since I was seven years old. And when I say that, dude, my voice as a child, I had the the voice of a child, but when I did Rich, I sound just like Richard Pryor then as I sound like him today. Wow. And I've been doing it like a long time, man. It's just and it's just more than the voice, man. It's the pantomizing, how he moves, how he walks, how he thinks. That was one of the things I, I was extremely impressed with is that the, the facial expressions, the mannerisms, uh, when you did it, it was like everything. And it was, uh, I mean, and you were like, brand new on the scene and i was like damn you way ahead of the curve with that shit i mean it was awesome and when they did the rich prior movie did you audition for that because i was i was rooting for you i was like there is nobody that can play this part better than martini here i never got a chance to audition for it and that's talking about it now but and damon wayans actually retweeted this on on twitter um and a lot of people they don't you know i've been following the movie for over 20 20 some years Damon Wayans was the first person to have the Richard Pryor movie. And my sister stays in Atlanta. She called me and said, baby, they have, they got a Richard Pryor competition out here. That damn dollar store Wi-Fi keep cutting them off. <laughs> that ain't Wi-Fi. This shit what for? <laughs> so you were saying it was a Richard Pryor competition? Yeah, and my, um, and my sister flew me out there. And I just had the clothes on my back. So she took me shopping and I went. And that's why I actually ended up meeting Mad Marv. But it was like uh, 69 other comedians end up being 70 comedians, including me. Man, I ended up winning first place. I won three grand and signed a contract to play alongside with Damon Wayans for the movie. And I was like, dude, I was elated. And yeah. then that's the original Arsenio Hall show was on. And Damon Wayans was talking about it. And he's, he talked about how he went to go visit Richard Pryor. And, you know, Rich was like, he'll go in and out. So Damon would just tell him how much he he admired him, this and that. And, and you know, Rich was like, get the hell out of here. And he was like, no, no, no. And that's when he said, Jennifer told him, no, he wants you to leave. And he was like, oh. So that's when they say, I heard that the movie was pulled from him then and dude i cried for a whole week guy wow wow yeah man, that, was, that was about to be a huge breakthrough oh uh, dude you know and but man i never i never gave up on it man you know and it's like it's like i know everybody it went to and went through all the way up until this point yeah because yes. eddie grip had that you know and it was said that richard Pryor passed him the torch and that's when he was doing malcolm and eddie at that time that's when this Talkins was Mike Epps and then something went wrong you know and that they pulled it from him and then years went by and then Forrest Whitaker was said to write it and he put his boy which was Michael B. Jordan you know he wanted him to play Rich so then at that point man that's when it just went on and went on and whatever and then the whole Eddie Murphy came up and then the Marlon Wayne situation and then Mike Epps resurfaced so, but at that point, Mike had set and spent a year with Richard Pryor, and it, it was it was a long long time coming. Then you know what I'm saying. So Mike was just Mike, just you know he was there with. Him. It was a, I mean just like like water coming out of a faucet, dude. I mean Rich didn't have no other way but what he wanted. Well, you're he doing it real big, man. I'm live with comedian Martini Harris right here. 
Uh, and I like to tell some some old school stories because a lot of people don't know that I used to be in the comedy game, and I and, and it's you okay. know I've been out for a long time, but <laughs> the guys that I've started with and was doing it with back when I was coming up, and um, you know they stuck the ones that stuck with it. They've been in the, they they the OGs now, man. How does it feel? Because we used to be the young guns just traveling around doing each other's clubs and trying to come up. We uh, looking up to Mike Bonner and Tommy Chun and Skeeter Murray and these cats, and and yeah. now you the big dog. How it feel, yeah. man? Oh man, is is dude is is beautiful, man. You know, just to I, I look back at those days, man, where. I had to come across my material versus where my material come across to me. And it's the same thing that I share, like, you know, because me and Kool-Aid have been roommates for, you know, forever. And I used to share with him, like, I said, dude, if you notice, we're carrying comedy because we got to make it work. But once you get on that level of the Mark Lawrence at the time, Mark Lawrence, the Chris Tuckers, Chris Rocks, you know, Bernie Max. Um, Bill Bellamy comedy was carrying them at that time because no matter what they said they can talk about a shoestring and people will laugh not so much as what they said but once one how they say it and the things that they've done so they laughing at all that so they admire that but you got your rough cities you got your cities that don't play that they don't care how hilarious you was in a movie you better bring that pain and that power to that stage and those three, no, yeah, those, well, four cities, I'll say. That's Detroit, for one, New York, Chicago, and Miami. Well, I'm going to add Atlanta in there. I'll say five. I'm going to say the top five. The fab five. Atlanta, Miami, Detroit, Chicago, and New York. You better bring that power to that stage. New York, I'm going to put number one, because you already know it's, it, it originated at Apollo. They didn't boo some of the stars. Hey man, it's just you know you just gotta have that you, you gotta have that fire, not only in your craft, but man, you gotta have that 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 fire. You gotta have that wick in your in your spirit to hold the fire for one, in order to accomplish anything. And 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 having that wick and that fire, man, you gotta have that faith and belief within yourself, no matter what people say to you. If they say you can't, you take that ball that up to the smallest pill and swallow it. And you know, you let it develop to you as being nourishing to your spirits and your belief that you don't have to look upon nobody else to tell to tell you how great you are. Be your own mirror, you know, reflect on your own self. And that's why I'm at it. And just like if Richard Pryor was here today, he'd say, say man, I say fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're in the, you're in the uh, comedy spotlight with comedian Martini Harris. Uh, we are live right here, man. And uh, I also I like to tell some of my old stories because also there's some interesting stories. And, and eventually, I'm sure I'll come across some comedians that I bring in that I didn't know back in the day. But uh, I have my story. My first uh, time I met Martini, it was he probably don't even remember this year. But I was hosting. I used to host an open mic at Jovan's. Oh yeah, and, uh, and, and one of his boys came up to me like, "Look, man, can we, you know, you can throw him something, man. We gonna bring him on. He's good, man. We throw throw us something, fifty dollars, twenty five dollars." I was like, "Man, that's open mic. I ain't paying." <laughs> I mean, who's this dude? I don't even know. Him. You know, but I let him on stage, but I ain't paying nobody to get up here, man. I ain't getting paid to do this shit. We just <laughs> followed each other around. And uh, that was the first time he came on and he did the Richard Pryor thing. And you did the Michael Jackson bit. That was also real good, too. Dude, I ain't did that in years. That was hilarious. I haven't done that in years, man. Man, I, re I remember a lot of... Dude, I remember a lot of spots that we did and where we used to hang. Like, uh, remember Snooks? Yeah. On Lafayette? Yeah. I remember that one. Dude, uh, the Comfort Zone in Southwest. Man, all them little spots, dude. You know, it just thought oh, those the those was the memories, man. The, yeah, the, man, that was the come up. That was the come yeah. up. That was the hard work where they, they get you the, the glory, man. I'll tell you this, man. The first comedian I ever met when I got into the game was uh Mike Bonner. And that was that and okay. I watched it. I don't know if you remember this club, but that was my first just out in the world performance was at Sharp Seven Flag, nineteen ninety one. Wow, That's, really? Sharp Seven Flags is where I started. And when I started, 
I heard other comedians running around saying, hey man, uh, Jamie Foxx just won a Bay Area. Jamie Foxx. And I was like, wow, who's Jamie Foxx? I said, this dude, I said, whoever it is, this, this dude, on, he, he's on his way. So I looked at it like, you know, as years went past, I was like, wow, he was on his way making it when I was just coming in. Yeah, and that was, that was cool. And that's when Mike Bonner pulled me aside, dude, and said, he was like, dude, he said, man, I ain't never heard or seen nobody portray Richard Pryor the way you just did. And I was like, oh, yeah. And he was like. Yeah, it was amazing, man. man. Yeah. It was truly that's amazing right. for somebody that was new in the in the, in the business. You were, you, were, you were fresh on the scene. It was just amazingly crisp. Uh, so I always give you props for that, man. And, and now you're like you're like doing a whole lot of shit. You come, you, you went through the hard work. You're still working hard, but you you want to come up. You're doing bigger shows. I saw you down to Shane Park. Also, you've been doing some films, man. I know you you opened up for Tony Robinson Music Hall. You're gonna be on the Motor City Motor Mouth One Hour Special. But you've done a lot. You've done quite a few of the underground films, man. I want to hear a little more about some of those. And you've done, I mean, because I think you've done like five movies, man. You're live with Comedian Martini here. So I was mentioning that you've done like five movies or some shit like that, man. Talk to me oh, about yeah. some of the projects you've done and what you got coming up. Uh, my first movie I did, um, actually, I wrote a lot of my uh, a lot of my, my, my um, dialogue. It was called Corner Store. And it was actually me, Bill Hill, and Mike Bonner, and comedian Shawnee D. She played the bag lady, but we played the winos. Mike Bonner played a, a, a wino that used to be a boxer. Bill Hill played a wino that used to be the number man. I played a wino that used to be a pimp. But the funny thing about it, we still think that we still are those characters in life. And dude, the, mon the movie was hilarious. And it actually, um, there's actually talks about a sequel. So we got that coming up in November. Also, I was I did a movie called Train Up a Child. A great movie with a with a powerful message. You know, I played an uncle, his name was Lucius, and his nephew, because I stayed with my mama, which my nephew was his grandmother, of course, because his parents were deceased. So he's talking about trying to get off in church, but I'm trying to show him the street life. You know, and he grew up and actually get off into it and end up losing his life. But you know what I'm saying, man, it's just it just shows you where God can send in one to come out and help too. And my other movie I did uh, last year actually, and that, that'll be coming out as well. It's called um, Next Generation. And that's actually with Richard Pryor's son, Mason Pryor, and Carvin Winans, that's Marvin Winans' twin brother, uh, his son, which is Ian Winans. So I did a movie with them. So that movie, dude, it went to the, you know, it went to the theaters. It went to Grand Rapids uh, here in Detroit. And um, I think Toledo, you know, out of selective cities. But it was, it, it did its thing. And also Corner Story is coming out on um, Blu-ray and DVD. So that's on its way out. So like I said about that part two thing. And the other movie I did last year is called Hope. Now I did that with um, Glenn Plummer. Um, everybody know um, uh, OG Bobby Johnson <laughs> and um, Noel G, great actor. Everybody know um, Noel G, played in a lot of movies with Denzel, like Training Day, and um, Neil Neil Brown Jr., um, aka DJ Yella, in okay. the new Strata Compton movie. He's also in it as well, but okay. it's called um, Pope, P O P E. It's a great movie, man. That's what's up. I'm yeah. proud of you, man, because I, like I said, man, it, it, it's, it's amazing to me to see uh, for those that stuck to it, you know, because I, I, of course, I ended up having to leave and uh, leave the city and that, and eventually just got out the game. And, and but people that stuck with it, they're doing big things now. And, I, and I'm proud of you. But one thing I always appreciated about you uh, once I we really got cool and I really got to uh, appreciate all, all of your talent was that I, I've, I've seen you act you've got some skills i mean it's not just like it's, it's more than just comedy uh when you when you act you you can actually act i mean have you ever uh, taken acting classes acting classes were embedded in me my whole life and i don't i don't i don't want to i don't want people to take this wrong but i do take life serious but i just feel as though my whole life is like cameras are around me every day like right now there are cameras not this one nigga but <laughs> there are cameras around me. <laughs> There's a technique that I learned and the way that I act. 
and that technique I learned, and I'll say who my acting coach was, was Richard Pryor. Everything that he's done, any interview, I have seen it. Seen his first stand up, you know, first television show. I mean, first tele, um, televised stand up. Rich show, I seen something in Rich. Like when he act, it's not about him going overboard, you know, or trying to stand higher than his, his cast mates, but it's just a thing that he's seen within himself and how he would betray this character and bringing that character to life. Richard Pryor was a writer of his mind and not a pen. And that's what I do. You know, we're spontaneous. It's like, I see it, I'm grabbing it. At the same time, man, when I portray people and I do different characters in movies, whether if it's, uh, they crazy or even if they're nice, I always get on my knees, man, and I have to pray to make sure that I, Martini Harris, is still at the forefront, that I come back and I'm not just going around being this other person. There you go, man. Well, I, I appreciate that. You live with comedian Martini Harris. Uh, and what you said is very true because it is one thing that I learned when I was uh, back in the business now and, and I was in acting classes and then and also in entertainment in general is that when the whole project looks better, you look you will shine more uh, as an individual because if you shine in a okay. bad project, nobody's going to see you. So it's all about okay. making sure that you not uh, not necessarily try to stand out, but just be the best you can be to make this a good quality project and keep everybody involved. So that's that's what's up. I want to say big up to Lynn and, and, and Ricardo. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we're here live on Blab.im, the comedy spotlight with comedian Martini Harris. What up, no? So, uh, Martini, uh, we, we've been on for, for a little bit. I know we, we missed some stuff, but uh, I also want to say that we, we're a little we're a little short on time because your Wi-Fi, your, your dollar store shit has been kicking out. Um, <laughs> There you go. Let me let me ask you this though: Do you have any uh, uh, big shows coming up? Hey, Hipster Girls is in the building. Do you have any big shows coming up that we need to hear about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, um, I be you know for my Motor City people that's listening right now, I be downtown on Bagley at on um, this gas light. You know that's Kool Aid spot right there. Everybody know Kool Aid. But I be there with my boy Chicago's own uh, Marcus Combs. We're there um, next month, actually October. 17th and 18th no 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 that's 17th is in grand rapids the 18th will be um it's two shows on the 18th in downtown but grand rapids uh me and marcus comb and kool-aid will be down there on the 17th that's that friday in october i got a joint out in toledo with my boy uh crazy daryl banks <laughs> you know for my toledo ohioans <laughs> um going to new york um atlanta and of course back chicago that's our next door neighbors. What's up, Shot Town? Uh, let me ask you this: You're on with comedian Martini Harris. I want to say give a give a quick shout uh, to my man Luke Kayum out of Sick Fit Gym in, in Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, he provides uh, he provides the gear. See, let me, let me show you this. Hold up, hold up. Get fit or die, bitches. It say bitches under there. I I, I can't get it all. <laughs> um, uh, man, we gotta get we gotta get you down here to Houston, man. When you coming to Houston? Oh, dude, man, I gotta get back down there, man, because you know my brother stay down there too. So I was down there at this club called Beamers. I know I heard his clothes and and everything, but I've been trying to get down there. And the promoter, it took almost like three years, but once I came, man, dude, I put my foot down so hard my man was like oh man and rodney perry even said look man i've been trying to tell you about this guy and uh, no no i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry it wasn't rodney perry that was uh the late james hannah rest in peace brother james hannah was hosting that show and he was telling them about him you know and he hosts that show and that was the last show that i did with james hannah man all right peace to james hannah man thanks for stopping in lynn lynn stopped in the beautiful lynn she's out in california stopped in just to uh fill up a little space while we waited for um uh, walmart to cut martinis <laughs> <laughs> just gonna keep cutting down so end up being perry drugs <laughs> uh so uh martini we we gotta uh we might have to wrap it up man because we short on time but i just wanted to uh touch base what let you get a chance one time to say any last any last words and salutations you want to throw out there anything you want us to know well, how we can reach you on social media. Uh, talk to me. Tell me what's going on. You can reach me on social media. Of course, I'm on Facebook, Martini Harris. Um, I'm also on Twitter, a toast of Martini, A-T-O-S-O-A-S-T-O-F-M-A-R-T-I-N-I. And also on IG, Instagram, Martini Harris 21. And look out for my book, man. It's coming out next year. It's called Where's My Comedian? 
And it's not just about comedy. It's about my life. So, you know. Looking forward to it, man, because uh, you, you're very, uh, you're one of the more interesting guys in the game. Uh, very talented. I really appreciate your talent uh, and a multiple talents. One time before you go, just give us some rich pride, man, because we got a new audience. See, people starting to come in. That other blab must have ended. So people are starting to come in. It's over. But oh, give, yeah. give these people a little bit because. None of these people were in the room when you did a little bit of Rich earlier. Okay, here's a little, I'm gonna give you a little Richard Pryor and Mutt Bone. Say, man, you know, man, I got like a lot of things in my life, man, that bothers me, right? <laughs> man, cause I get down. I don't mean bands either, Jack, right? <laughs> man, I met this one guy, man, they call him Mutt Bone. Mutt Bone used to talk to me, man, you know, and just say, say, boy, come here. Say, I wanna talk to you just for a minute. That was a man that used to sit chow in his chow chow, right where I'm sitting, chow in his chow. He's live with comedian uh, Martini Harris, man. We are wrapping up. I see Ow. this that just came in. We getting a lot of people just coming in because that other band, I told you this was going to happen, but it's all good. I want to thank everybody that joined us for coming in. What up, though, Alyssa? I see you, baby. Martini, thanks for joining me, man. We're going to have to do this again and when you got a better damn oh, connection because you got some bullshit I, Wi-Fi right now that's been fucking up the whole interview. My Wi-Fi is only here for a calculator. <laughs> <laughs> Martini, again, thanks for joining me, man. We're going to do this again. You can listen for it yeah. on the podcast, the What Up Do Show. You can catch it at facebook.com slash What Up Do Show. I will be posting the episode there or you can search what for it on stitcher.com. Uh, or the What Up Do Show featuring your, your truly, Tim Wilson. And this episode will be called Comedy Spotlight with comedian Martini Harris. Yo, thanks for joining me, brother. Big ups to all my people here out here on Blab.im, all my people listening to uh, the What Up Do Show. Thanks again to Martini Harris, comedian Martini Harris. If you hear his name, go check him out. I vouch for this, brother. Top-notch entertainment. Guaranteed you will be all the way entertained. He is all the way live. And that's all I got, man. Peace out. Pressy crease out. Keep the police out while I bust his niece out. And I'm out of here like last year. Oh, and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. What up, everybody? This is your girl, Keish, host of the Relationship Handbook Live. And you're tuned in to my boy, T, on the What Up Do Show. What up, do? What up, do? It's the What Up Do Show. What up? It's your boy, Dino Red of the Red Rock Podcast Network. And you listen to my boy, T. Wilson of the What Up Do Show. You better tell somebody, baby. 7.30. Come experience pop, pop, pop culture from the dark side. On the 7.30 show with me, Latone Hart. Ooh, I, I need my cigar on this. Available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, TuneIn, Betamax, and VHS. Yo, what's up with your board? I'm just a man with a fork and a world full of soup. No, I don't need no damn medicine. Latone Hart, he may need medicine. Check me out on the 7.30 show podcast. Yo, this is Spirit G of the G-Spot Podcast Network. You're listening to the number one fan by default, since he's the only fan left on earth. Tim Wilson of the What Up Though Show. Somebody come get y'all uncle. What's up, everyone? This is Lavinia at Chibi Show Nuff on Twitter and host of the Just Thinking Out Loud podcast. And you are listening to the What Up Do Show with my friend Tim Wilson. Keep it locked. Hey, everybody, this is Jerry Taylor from the You Name It podcast, and you're listening to the Reverend Al Sharpton on. Oh, shoot, that's right. You're listening to the What Up Do, What Up Do, What Up Do Show. This is Murray Riley Jr. from the Stump and Shout Talk Show, now the Sky Shout Radio Podcast. You're listening to my man, Tim Wilson of the What Up Doe Show. Keep it tuned in, everyone. What up, everybody? This is Gil Lowry from the Onyx Truth Podcast, and you are listening to my homeboy, T. Wilson, from the What Up Doe Show. So keep it locked, fam.